Sauhard Akaki has a detailed look at Manchester United's defensive tactics under Jose Mourinho introduction over the past decade in football. The classical 442 game plan has often been readjusted and at times almost replaced in its entirety to adjust to the changes in both regional and continental football. On quite a few occasions, having addressed the shortcomings of the shape and style, these revamped 442 approaches have proven to be successful. Moreover, the past few years have also demonstrated the versatility of the shape, with managers adjusting the formation for methods ranging from high-pressing strategies to deep-seated counter-approaches. This article aims to shed light on the implementation of the 442 shape in recent years with regard to the defensive phase of play, with a primary focus on Manchester United under Jose Mourinho. The article will attempt to analyse the trend of Mourinho's defensive shape, break down the mechanics, and assess its efficacy in the last Premier League season. With the entry of the philosophy of fluidity in attack in the approach of most current-day managers, the abilities of a player in attack are given more weight over the defensive capabilities. A quick glance at the differences in the traditional and modern fullback should highlight how different roles are today due to changing systems, with more preference given to the pace and ability to influence the attacking phase rather than positioning, marking ability and sturdiness. This may perhaps indicate why modern football has seen most successful teams adjust it to defend tactically rather than rely on the individual ability of players. This approach compensates for the extra attack-oriented players, with comparatively poor defensive abilities for the position, now placed in what were once considered defensive positions. There have been many varied approaches to tactical defending over the last few years with high-pressing methods gaining popularity, the holding midfield position obtaining immense tactical importance and, as in this scenario, teams adapting to a sturdier shape in the defensive phase. Mourinho's United are one of the many teams in recent years that have utilized a 442 as a basis for defensive play. United finished the league with the second-best defensive record GA29 CS17 behind Tottenham GA26 CS17 with both teams tied for the most clean sheet 17. Interestingly, while Pochettino's Spurs managed over 70% of the clean sheets at home, United had a more even distribution of clean sheets at home 47% and away 53%, despite having conceded close to 60% of the goals in away games. Note the statistics mentioned in this article is based on league games in an attempt to standardize data. Shape and setup regardless of the starting personnel or formation, the shape tends to resolve towards a 442 in the initial defensive phase fig 1. With the often used 4231, the attacking midfielder joins the striker to form the first line, with two wide midfielders and two central midfielders forming the second line, in front of a back four. Figure 1 Intriguingly, the experimental price season 352 also sees the team move to a similar shape in the defensive phase Fig 2 and 3. Figure 2 Figure 3 Mechanics moving opposition build up to wide areas in general, managers have their choice of deciding where on the pitch the team does most of the defending wide areas, central areas, high up the pitch, within own half etc. and try to implement methods to ensure this plan functions well. In this scenario, the setup aims to move the ball into wider areas in the early phase of defence, limit the ball from being played vertically into central areas, and defend in wider areas. While the team may be outnumbered in central areas, the player match-up winger to full-back full-back to winger is almost always the same in wide areas usually 2v2. Moreover, the wider areas are easier to overload in later phases of defence in comparison to central areas, where an attempt to overload an already outnumbered midfield would pull the defence out of position. To accomplish this, the two forward players in the setup position themselves to guide the passes from opposition centre-backs into wider areas and restrict passes through the centre fig, 4 and 5. The players stationed in wider areas then attempt to perform adequate defensive duties to isolate play in wide areas and restrict the progression of build-up. Figure 4 Figure 5 Wide Area Overload and Winger Isolation These methods are very similar to those employed by Simon in 201314. Once the ball moves wide, extra numbers join the area to limit the options of the wide player Fig 6 and 7. Figure 6 Figure 7 In more advanced areas, an effort is made to isolate the winger in wide areas to prevent progression of play Fig 8. 
Figure 8 Central marking and pressing The basic principle of any active defensive plan is to deny the opposition of space or time on the ball, or both. In this context, both marking and pressing maneuvers are implemented in different areas of the pitch to reduce space for wide players, and time on the ball for central players. In wider areas with a matching number of players, the opposition can be marked and allowed little space with restricted movement and containment of crosses from wide areas. In central areas with many teams now opting for extra numbers in midfield, the players are often outnumbered resulting in a mismatch in marking. The central roles are involved in pressing of central opposition players in an attempt to reduce the amount of vertical passes played to central areas, and thus complement the effort to force the opposition build up into wider areas. The opposition players in central areas are forced to be on the toes and receive most passes in a moving position, with little time to turn or make a progressive pass run fig 9. Figure 9 with reduced time on central players to receive the ball. This approach is also seen to increase the number of interceptions made in these areas, especially against teams that build up through the middle. The mechanics of the setup do indicate that it should function better against opposition formation with a two-man midfield, since the equal central numbers and positional matchup should allow for better marking alongside pressing in central areas. This signaled for a better look into to the defensive performance of the system against various formations Fig. 16. Similar examples There have been other teams that have employed a similar defensive setup in recent years. Among these, one of the more successful defensive plans was Simon's Atletico Madrid side of 201,314. The solid functioning defensive system paired with an efficient and appropriate counter-approach and attack allowed the team to perform much of the above initial expectations. Note Simon's 13-14 side conceded the least goals in the league 26. Alongside Barcelona, Atletico averaged the least number of shots, conceded per game both at 8.9 per game. Though the defensive approaches were similar, the offensive plan of the two sides differ. Another successful example bearing similarities with Mourinho's setup is Ferguson's United side of 200,708. The setup was a similar 442 with a similar approach of pushing the ball wide to the most of the defending and keeping central areas clear. Since the type of formations faced in the league back then most with a two-man central midfield allowed for more matching positions with the opposition, SAF side seemed more efficient at marking opponents and limiting play in central areas alongside a decent amount of pressing. Rui Vitoria's Benfica side has been seen to utilize similar methods in defense, although unlike United, they utilize a 442 shape variant for both attacking and defensive phases. The team showed how lethal the system can be when paired with an efficient attack that balances the defensive setup. However, one thing made clear through Vitoria's side is that the setup struggles when opposition is allowed to play through the center. This called for a further look into how Mourinho's team fared in similar situations, and whether this was an actual tactical weakness. Note Benfica finished as league winners last season having conceded the least number of goals 18, at the other end, Benfica scored the most goals in the league last season 72, Benfica were third in terms of least shots, conceded per game 8.7, Benfica were third in terms of least crosses conceded per game 15. Let us now look into certain components affected by the setup and how they reflect in the team's performance. Counter-attack The shape and system allows for more efficiency in quick transition and counter-attacking. With the shortest distance to goal on the counter being through the middle, an efficient counter-system would require at least two central players in attacking positions during the defensive phase, with a supporting wide player along one flank to join in if progression through the middle is restricted. This 442 shape readily permits the two central players needed in attack fig 10. Furthermore, with the approach directed to guide the ball towards one flank, a player in the opposite flank will almost inevitably be free to join the break. In an ideal situation, this would allow at least three players to dictate the progression of the counter-attack. Figure 10 The efficacy of the shape has already been proven on multiple occasions in recent years. In the 201,314 season, Atletico Madrid used a primary counter-approach that was heavily benefited by the defensive shape and system. 
Ferguson's 200,708 Game Plan incorporated a counter system based on the same shape and similar defensive principles in a season where the attacking trio of Rooney, Tevez and Ronaldo reaped the benefits of the approach. Leicester City employed similar methods under Ranieri in the league-winning season. Barcelona under Enrique on occasions implemented parts of the system, with Rakitic assigned to the most of the defending on the right flank in the early defensive phase. This allowed Messi to move closer to the centre, permitting three players Messi, Suarez, Neymar to be available in advanced areas for the counter, and at least two players always available in central attacking positions for counter-progression no matter which flank the ball was won in fig 11 figure 11 it was inevitable that Mourinho would integrate a counter-component into his approach, but perhaps was waiting for his defence to adjust. However, unlike Atletico Leicester, counter-attacks still appear to be secondary approach in Mourinho's offensive system. With players like Mitarion, Marshall, Lukaku and Rashford available, more emphasis can perhaps be expected on the secondary approach in this coming season Fig 12. Figure 12 note of the seven entirely completed counter-attacks made by United last season, six game in the last three months of the season. Crosses the system ensures that defending is concentrated in wide areas, position matching and close marking of wide players. When properly implemented, the system is known to limit the number of crosses conceded Fig. 13. Figure 13 however, a mismatch of positions out wide a failure in adequately defending wide areas may result in dire consequences for the team. A good example was United's return game against Arsenal at the Emirates. The home side went with a 343 that succeeded in causing a mismatch out wide, with most United players pulled centrally. This exposed wide areas, especially exploiting United's weak left side of defence. Note United finished fourth among teams with least crosses conceded per game last season, with 16 per game 16% 16 better than league average. Atletico finished the 201,314 season in fourth among teams with least crosses conceded, with 17 per game 20% better than league average. United conceded just two goals from crosses resulting from build-up play, both against Arsenal, both assists from United's left side of defence defending central areas as mentioned earlier. The setup has been known to undergo problems against opposition capable of opening up central areas in build-up. Knowing this issue, the United midfield is often seen closing down opposition players with space in central areas as soon as possible. Judging from the performance of Mourinho's team last season, the importance of keeping the opposition from exploiting central areas was further emphasised. A major proportion of the side's defensive problems came from central areas. An analysis of the goals conceded by United last season also indicate towards an issue in defence when the team fails to keep play away from central areas Fig. 14. The goal analysis also revealed a considerably weak left side of defence in comparison to the right last season. Fig. 14 note over half the goals 54% conceded solely from open play build-up by United in the league were assisted from central areas close to 78% of build-up play goals assisted from outside the box by the opposition were from passes through central areas all goals conceded from crosses and pullbacks from wide areas have come from United's left side of defence. Interceptions Mourinho's additional measures during the defensive phase involves marking central players and closing down opposition players in matching central positions. Unlike drastic measures of very closely marking opposition a heavy pressing aimed at dispossessing the opposition player, the moderate levels of pressing marking employed by United are perhaps more focused at forcing the opposition to rush and misplace passes in central areas Fig. 15. Figure 15 with less time and space for central players, this method was seen to increase the risk of opposition passes through the middle being misplaced, creating a lot more interceptions for the team. Note United averaged 15.3 interceptions per game last season second best in the league. Aerial route attempting to close passes through central areas prompts opposing teams to attempt aerial play through the centre. When the setup is in proper function, the midfield is a closely tracked and wide areas marked leaving the opposition CBs with limited short passing options. This often prompts long passes from the opposition defensive line. This results in the team having to defend an additional number of aerial balls in the defensive phase. 
United have, however, managed to compensate for this with a more than adequate average height among players in the spine of the formation CMSCBS paired with decent ability in the air, in a very similar fashion to how Simon compensated for similar problems back then. This may also seem to have played a role in reducing the number of goals conceded from set pieces despite the high number of fouls, again very similar to Atletico 13-14. Note despite ranking second in conceding most fouls per game, United conceded just six goals from indirect free kicks and corners, the best record in the league. In addition to this balls directed behind the defence seem to have been compensated for with a well-drilled, efficient offside trap system. Note the United defence averaged catching the opposition offside 2.6 times per game, the second best record in the league. Fouls with tactical defending, player ability and performance in defence has a larger impact on the number of fouls committed. Poor tackling, positioning and defensive decisions from a player placed in a position requiring more tackles would result in quite an increase in fouls, given away. Mourinho encountered this problem last season with Pogba occupying one of the two CM positions. With the player having a hard time balancing out his attacking and defensive roles in a two-man midfield, the midfielder gave away quite a few fouls. As the season progressed, the numbers stabilised with Herrera soaking up more defensive responsibility. With Matic brought to the squad to reduce the restraints on Pogba, a further reduction in these numbers is expected. Note United finished second among the sides with the most fouls given away in the league, with an average of 13 fouls per game, Pogba gave away the most number of fouls in the United squad last season, averaging 2.1 fouls per game, amassing almost as much as CB's Bailey 1.1 game and Rojo 1.1 game combined, Pogba was third among place players with most fouls given away. Defensive performance versus various formations The setup showed a variable performance against different formations. Results against the commonly faced formations in the league last season will be discussed. Facing the 343 seemed to cause the most problems. Games against 343s often called for compensatory changes, such as the game against Chelsea where Herrera was used to tactically negate Hazard. Chelsea finished the game with no shots on target. The experimental price season 352 project that Mourinho has undertaken may be a part of his attempt to address this problem. Note of United's five league losses, three were against a 343 United lost every game against a 343 away from home three out of three, conceding an astonishing average of three goals per game, and scoring just one goal in the three games. Statistics show a comparatively better performance against the 343 at home, United showed an overall poor performance against the 343 50% loss percentage, conceding more goals per game 1.7 and shots on goal per game 3.3 than against any other formation, with a goal conceded from every two shots on target. The 433 variant was the most faced formation in the league, thus requiring the system to function against these shapes for the team to perform well defensively in the season. The setup performed well against the 433, perhaps exploiting the fact that most of these teams looked to find the midfield three in early phases of build up and play through the middle. United managed 7 of the 17 clean sheets against the 433 note United managed clean sheets in more than half the games 54% against the 433 7 clean sheets in 13 games United averaged less goals per game 0.54 while facing the 433 than against any other formation Theoretically the setup was expected to perform well against the 442 the matching positions were expected to allow for more efficient marking and pressing and thus better chances of winning back possession. Although not all areas of performance were up to theoretical expectations, the setup provided a good performance against 442s. Note United averaged more possession 61.97% against 442s than against any other formation. United's best average tackle success rate 73.3% is against the 442. The team averaged the least shots, conceded 8.5 per game and Sot conceded 2.3 per game when playing against the 442. Mourinho's side achieved a higher win rate 67% against the 442 than against any other formation. United did not 
not lose a single game against a 4.42. Additionally, United averaged the best scoring record two goals per game while playing against the 442 formation. Figure 16 note the system was also seen to perform well when facing narrow formations with a four-man defense 412,124,132 etc. But, there is insufficient data to adequately demonstrate this. This may perhaps be a result of the opposition trying to play through center due to the narrow shape, which eventually proves difficult since United system restricts these areas, and attempts to push the build up wide. This aspect will have to be looked into further this season. Role of pragmatism in United's play Knowing Jose Mourinho's footballing philosophy, there is no denying the additional tactical maneuvers employed by the manager to handle specific opposition threats that affect his team's tactics and performance. With this setup at United, Mourinho's philosophy has remained quite the same. Indicators from games early in this season have shown that the manager is willing to tweak his game plan in order to obtain favourable results. Super Cup vs Real Madrid Zidane's approach of building through the middle and the calibre of Madrid's central players, and the fact that United have struggled when central build-up is permitted meant that Mourinho would more than likely take compensatory measures. Mourinho has been known to use positional matching on the field to attempt at tactically negating specific opposition players Fig. 17. Knowing the threat posed by Madrid's midfield diamond, his focus was very likely on this area. Of the three United players in matching average positions with Madrid's midfield, two Herrera and Matic were utilised in the attempt of tactically negating opposition players Cross and Isco respectively while Pogba was given a free role on the left side. However, with Madrid's fluid midfield often roaming from position off the ball and adapting to play, Mourinho's side lost the midfield battle on the night. Figures 17 friendly versus Man City holding midfielders and central attacking midfielders are known to cause problems against a 442 shape, with both roles implying that opposition players lie in the space between the lines. With the entire setup based on moving opposition play wide in the initial phase and preventing play in central areas, a midfielder dropping deep to receive passes and allow build up through the middle is a very big threat. Mourinho was seen trying to address the issue with a holding role in this game. With City playing with a three man midfield and Guardiola's known approach to creating devastating build ups through central areas, Mourinho attempted to reduce the threat posed by the midfield trio with his known approach of positional matching and marking. Considering Tour's holding midfield role to be the only midfield role with a fairly constant position in City's build up phase, Mourinho employed his attacking midfielder Mitarion to mark and close down Torre when City tried to move the build up to central areas. Fig. 18. Figure 18 Conclusion Is it worth putting so much tactical emphasis on defence with all this focus and placement of precious training time and effort on defending tactically? The important question would be whether the method pays off on the pitch. In terms of performance, it has already been seen with various teams in the past that when tactical defending is implemented correctly, the system does improve the overall defence without bringing much increase in the amount of effort and energy the players put in. Although utilising a very different system for defence, another example of a team from the Premier League enjoying success from defending tactically is Pochettino's Tottenham. After his arrival in 2014, Tottenham finished the first season under him in fifth place, yet had conceded 53 goals, the highest number conceded by a fifth-place place team in over a decade. Perhaps realising the problems at the defensive end, the revamped system resulted in a drastic improvement in performance in the next two seasons. Note Pochettino has now reduced goals conceded by an astonishing 50%, from 53 in his first season to 26 in 201,617 fig. 19. Tottenham conceded fewer league goals than any other Premier League side last season 26, 7 fewer than league champions Chelsea. In the last decade in the Premier League, only two sides have conceded fewer goals SAF's Man United 07 08 22 and 08 09 24, both of which won the league in the respect respective seasons. Figure 19 for Mourinho's side last season, defensive performance was crucial in the way the season finished, especially because of the poor conversion stats at other end of the pitch. 
Note United lost every game in the league in which they conceded more than one goal. Over the past season, statistical trend shows an improving defence as players settle into to the manager's approach. United conceded 9.5 shots per game last season, the least in almost a decade. Fig 20. Figure 20 There is an interesting indicator of the change in defensive performance over the course of the season, with the team adjusting to the setup. While the number of interception stacker shots conceded and ball possession remaining fairly constant, Fig 21, the average number of goals conceded per game gradually reduced as season progressed, Fig 22. This shows an adequately functioning plan, with better performance achieved from the same amount of defensive effort. Figure 21 Figure 22 Note United conceded just 10 goals in 19 games in the second half of the season 70% of total goals United conceded were in the first half of the season. Mourinho's side were conceding just 0.52 goals per game in the second half of the season, a whopping 50% less than the first 19 games, 1 goal per game. 11 of United's 17 clean sheets 65% came in the second half of the season. United conceded just 1 goal arising completely from opposition build-up in 19 games in the second half of the season Fig 23. Figure 23 On a general note, it is an exciting thing for modern football that many managers are willing to invest time and energy in the defensive phases of the teams. The past few years in football has seen the birth of several ingenious defensive strategies, with quite a significant portion of these setups being implemented by bigger teams. There is a slowly developing realization among both managers and fans that defensive football and playing good defense are two very different entities. Perhaps there is still hope for a more wholesome and inclusive modern culture in football.